This is the Come A Girl Daily Podcast, written by Stephanie Bond. September 4th, Sunday. When the third set of church bells rang, I realized Detective Jack Terry had forsaken me today. I hope it's for something fun, like tickets to a Braves game or fishing, versus something gruesome, like a murder. Or maybe he decided to spend the day with a woman who walked and talked. He seemed to have a surplus of ambulatory females to choose from. Okay, so it's just us. I guess now's as good a time as any to tell you about the father of my fetus. I'm chagrined to tell you it's none other than the engaged Duncan who's destined for a five-tier pink grapefruit cake wedding in two short months. Here's the way things went down. When Duncan returned from his tour in the Peace Corps, we got together for old time's sake and tossed back a few too many brews. He, because he was happy to see American beer again. Me, because I was happy to see him again. We picked up right where we left off. It was a great evening and neither one of us mentioned his fiance. He was too drunk to drive, so he crashed at my apartment. And sometime during the night had migrated from the sagging couch in the living room to my bed. Shame on me, I knew he was in love with Trina, but I reasoned she would have him for the rest of their lives. So having him for one little night didn't seem so wrong. After all, I'd seen him first. But if you're thinking the encounter was a drunken grab fest, you'd be wrong. Duncan's lovemaking was sweet, but surprisingly intense and purposeful. It was such an emotional experience for me. I convinced myself he felt the same way about me and the engagement would be unwound. We fell asleep with our hands intertwined and I woke up alone. While I was wiping the sleep from my eyes, I'd gotten a text from Duncan. Last night was my mistake. I value your friendship, but I'm Mary and Trina. Please don't hate me. I was crushed and mortified that something that had meant so much to me, he considered to be a mistake. By the time I brushed my teeth, I realized how sadly unoriginal the whole story was and resolved to act as if it hadn't happened. I deleted his text without responding, and I didn't tell a soul, not even Roberta. When she found his San Antonio Spurs cap in the living room and demanded to know who it belonged to, I convinced her one of her sniffing admirers had left it behind. She had hung it on a peg in the entryway with a plethora of other hats and coats and umbrellas. Every morning before I left the apartment, I touched the cap. The morning after text was the last time I'd heard from Duncan until he visited my room. I wonder if he'd stood there and congratulated himself for not ending his engagement and getting involved with me, because then he'd feel obligated to the vegetable and bed three. Anyway... The bottom line is I'm 14 weeks pregnant and I have a laundry list of problems. The only person who knows who the father is can't talk or move. The medicine Dr. Jarvis gave me might have harmed the baby. And if I don't wake up, who will raise the child? And if I do wake up, how well will I be and what kind of mother would I make on my own? I'm scared to death my family is going to take my baby. And I'm scared to death they won't. Hi, this is Stephanie Bond, author of the Coma Girl Daily Podcast. If you have a question you'd like for me to answer on an upcoming bonus episode, check the show notes for links to reach out on social media. Thanks for listening. Come back tomorrow for another episode of Coma Girl. And please tell a friend.